Yeast Starters, the how and why. What's going on everybody? My name is Dylan with Hop Killer Brewery and today's video is geared all around yeast starters. What a yeast starter is, the benefits and why you should be doing one, and how to do it step by step. What is a yeast starter? A yeast starter serves two purposes. The first and primary purpose would be to increase cell count. You have a single packet that has an estimated amount of cells in the packet. You then using the yeast starter by a mixture of dry malt extract and water and basically creating a mini beer or a wort that you would then add the single pack of yeast into this environment that would allow the yeast to then multiply targeting around your ideal amount of cells needed for your batch size and your gravity of your wort that you will then be brewing. Uh, its second purpose is basically waking them up. You're taking yeast out of the refrigerator in a dormant state, in a cold state, and then giving them an environment roughly around fermentation temperature and a specific gravity ideal for reproducing, and then allowing them to kind of wake up from where they've been stored, and basically setting the stage, getting them active, getting them hyped up to then go into your wort that you are brewing days later to create a healthy, strong, and active fermentation. So what do you need for a yeast starter as far as equipment goes? Well, you need an Erlenmeyer flask. This is a special kind of glass. It's called borosilicate glass. Borosilicate glass. Which allows you to basically direct fire under it on the glass itself without it shattering. So you need one of these flasks. They make them in multiple sizes depending on what batch sizes you use. They ideally like a two liter flask would be perfect for you if you just do five gallon batches for the most part. Uh, I use fives, uh, one for a decreased boil over chance when you go to fire it on the stove. And two, because I do bigger batches, I usually do 10 gallon batches. Being able to have a three, four, five liter starter size is ideal for me. Next, you're gonna need some dry malt extract. And pretty much any old light dry malt extract that you can buy is what you're gonna be using. So you need some of this, and then a stir plate and a magnetic stir bar. So basically, this sits in here, inside your flask, spins, causing a vortex, which aerates, allows oxygen into the starter, which oxygen is needed by yeast to then reproduce. So this basically speeds up a starter down to about 12 to 24 hours. So how are you supposed to know how much dry malt extract and water you need for your specific yeast starter? I personally use Brewer's Friend. It tells you exactly how many ounces or grams, whatever you use, of dry malt extract with how much water to produce when you enter in what your expected volume and gravity of the wort you'll be brewing is. So if you're brewing a five gallon batch of an expected final uh, starting gravity of 1.060. You would then type that into this calculator with your manufacture date on your yeast packet and it'll give you how much dry malt extract to mix in with how much water to then boil on the stove, let it chill, pitch your yeast, put it on the stir plate, and let it rock. This is the process I use to make a yeast starter. Just for the example, I'm going to be brewing a 10 gallon batch of a hazy IPA the following weekend that this video was filmed. So right here I'm just reactivating some Y yeast 1318. For my specific starter, I needed close to a pound of dry malt extract and about 4 liters of water. These packets are fairly old and this brew that's coming up will be hopefully a starting gravity of 1080. So a lot of yeast cells are needed, uh, but the process is all the same for you guys. It's just mixing drinking quality water, which in my case I use RO, and the dry malt extract to your desired needs. I showed you earlier on my phone the little calculator that I use. So just type in what you need. And then here, when the burner is on, and you just mixed up the DME, the little clumps tend to settle at the bottom of the flask. So keeping it swirled 
and keeping it moving until the boil gets started that's will be moving all the clumps for you and eventually dissolving uh, it, otherwise you'll leave some scorching at the bottom um, just getting some tin foil that I set on top to allow the steam to sanitize from the boil during the starter otherwise you can just spray it with some star sand like I do later in the video uh, but it takes a while to get up to boil you can use a bigger flame I tend to do it like on medium to medium high heat just to avoid any scorching because I have done that a few times and once you pass this hot break it's pretty easy going after that you only need a 10 minute timer to do these starters and at the beginning like I said is the most difficult you kind of have to go back and forth and as you saw there it almost boiled over which makes a mess inside the house and it makes a mess on the stove and it's a pain to clean so be very careful making this starter I tend to not leave at all because I have had boil overs and it's just not worth the mess so 10 minutes on the clock once that is wrapped up you're gonna go ahead and put the foil back over and get it ready to start chilling uh, you can use the steam like I said or sanitize it either way be careful the whole vessel is extremely hot so I just fill my sink with cold water uh, put the starter or the wort that will be the starter in and then I use all the ice that's in my ice maker to kind of help the chilling down uh, smaller starters don't require that long of a process this does take like 30 to 40 minutes if you refill your ice it would be a lot faster this is just how I do it we bring it down to about about fermentation temperature though starters can go at a higher temperature I usually shoot for 70 uh, but if the house is colder you know I'll pitch the yeast 75 uh, 80 depending on the strain this can tolerate higher temperatures so I sent it in at about 77 degrees once that's done sanitize the, the scissors the packets and pour the yeast in then you're pretty much done now you put it on the stir plate and you wait I wait 24 hours the best way to do it wait 24 hours put it in a fridge for 24 hours and you will see the separation in the yeast and that is what you will pour off when you go to pitch the starter. This is 24 hours after it's been on the stir plate. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kill the stir plate and we're gonna put it in a refrigerator to then let the yeast settle to the bottom, allowing the wort liquid to separate from the top, which you will then pour off the wort liquid before pitching to your beer. That's it, please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys next time.